Hello friends and neighbors, welcome back to The Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you had a great week. Uh, I'm excited, I'm very excited about today's video because it is a, a viewer request, a viewer request from Brandy Thrift who wanted to know more about uh, note sequences when it comes to scales, major and minor scales. Um, this is probably going to be, well, more than one video I'll say. I don't know if it'll be a full series, but we'll see. It might be. I don't know. Um, because when I started thinking about the way I practice these sequences, uh, so many ideas came to mind. So I'm going to start um, with just a couple of them. But the other thing I really wanted to get into was the idea of using these patterns really to build your vocabulary. These are not just like throwaway patterns to, to strengthen your hands. These exercises are great for every aspect of your musicality. So they're obviously going to be building your, your chops, your hands, and your technique. But I think the sound of each of these uh, exercises will also help to build your vocabulary. They are very useful in musical situations. They're very beautiful and they're very melodic. The thing that I've always said about these exercises is that you have to find the beauty in them. Once you do, you will realize the value and understand that these can definitely be part of who you are as a musician when it comes to expressing your voice and your ideas. So let's take it to the base. So the first thing I have to say about these exercises is the fact that, well, I don't necessarily do them all. Um, there are a few that I kind of lean more towards. I guess over the course of the next couple of videos, I will demonstrate all of them um, and tell you which ones I use and which ones I don't really use that much. Um, but for now, I'll give you two that I really enjoy. I'm only going to give you two because there's a lot that we can talk about with these two uh, phrases. One of them is taking three notes through the major scale. And I think I'm only going to deal with the major scale in this video. And then maybe in the next video, well, we'll see what happens in the next video. For now, check this out. Three notes. I'm going to play um, G major. Let's just deal with the G major scale. So of course the G major scale starting on the third fret of the E string. going to take that G major scale all the way up to C, the fifth fret of the G string. So there is my scale. The first thing to do when you play any of these exercises is just get the scale under your fingers. It's a good way to warm up, get your fingers familiar with what they have to do. I'm using the old four finger, sorry, one finger per fret, four fingers per fret, <laughs> one finger per fret. And starting with the root note, the G with my second finger, right? So once I have an understanding of the shape of the scale and how the notes sort of lay on the fingerboard, then I can start getting into the sequential patterns because now I know, or at least my fingers know what they have to do and where they have to go. So, three note phrase. Very simple. Taking the first three notes of the scale and then starting three note sequential patterns from every degree of the scale. This is very cool and it's going to get into some, uh, some more complex patterns as we go along. So, there are a number of ways that we can play these. Well, there are three ways, really. And the way I like to practice these exercises is ascending, descending, and then alternating, which is one um, that might pose a bit more of a, cha a challenge. Um, a, lot of my, a lot of my students have a little more trouble playing the, uh, the alternating exercises, whereas the ascending and descending exercises are probably phrases that we've all played before. So, here is an ascending three note phrase on the G major scale. So I take the first three notes, second, and then 
I come back. Now, the thing that I notice when I first give these to a student is sometimes they'll end up skipping uh, one of the phrases or they'll skip a note or skip a sequence. So a good way to remedy that would be to say the number of the note that you're uh, starting the phrase from. In other words, um, say out loud the degree of the scale that you're starting the phrase from. So if I say one, obviously that's the first note. Then I can say two, which means I'm starting on the two of the scale. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I can just play those last three notes on the G string. But when I get to that C, that's actually the 11th of the scale. So I can count down from 11 if I want to when I play the descending pattern. So now I'm playing three note descending phrases from the 11th note of my G major scale, which in this case is C at the fifth fret of ba -ba -ba -ba, the G string. So much information to keep track of, but I hope you're following. So here we go. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and the third is my first of three notes, and that's where I end. You know, the other thing is um, you could end there, but what I like to do is when I get to that last set of three notes, I'll play one more sequence to take me down a semitone below the root note. This way, if I want to turn the exercise into a loop, I can do that. So that's a three note sequence. So we played that three note sequence ascending and descending. And we also played it basically in like a three, four kind of uh, time signature. We can also play this in four, four, where you, you leave a bit of a space after the third note of your phrase. A little bit easier. And then back. Very simple. Um, so that's a three note phrase, ascending and descending. The next thing to do would be to alternate our phrases. So essentially what happens is, we talked a little bit about this before in a previous video when I was talking about playing uh, sequences on the pentatonic scale. So when you alternate the sequences, you have three notes ascending. So instead of playing the second set of three notes this way, I will take those three notes and play them backwards. So I get ascending, descending. And as I said in the previous video, it's uh, up a note from there to come down, and then up a note to go up. So on and so forth. I'll play that again, slowly, and this time a little bit more in time. So you can see what I'm doing there is I'm just simply playing these three note sequences. First set of three, go up a note to come down up a note for the next three, up a note from where I land to the next three, up a note from where I am 
up a note from there, up a note, up from there, and then the last three notes. So then I do the same thing coming back, but this time I go down a note to play each sequence, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. I'll demonstrate. So here, on the descending sequence, I start from the 11th of the scale. That is um, the 5th fret of the G string, the note C. And I come down with the descending pattern as follows. So I play the first three notes descending from the 11th, and then I come down one note to come up. And then I come down one note to come down. Down one note to come up. So on and so forth. So, there is our three note pattern ascending and descending and alternating. Um, and then there is another three note pattern that we can talk about, which is very cool. And that is the pattern where we take our three note pattern and basically turn it into a four note pattern by playing the sequence of three notes and then going back to the first note of our phrase. Which means this turns into this. So this is very cool. It's a very cool pattern. So I'm going to take this ascending and descending through the G major scale. So again, all I have to do if I want to keep track of where I am is I can count the notes. I can either do this out loud or in my head. But I always know where I am if I'm counting those notes as I go. So that's my first note. Two. Three, four, fifth of the scale, sixth, seventh, there's my eighth, or the one. And then I can keep I can keep going from there. Now once I get to that C, here's the thing. I don't want to go beyond that. I just want to understand the scale as it sits in this area of the neck without having to move in either direction anywhere. Because once I get an understanding of what happens here, then it's easier for me to move on from there and, and try some other shapes. But for now, I am centered on this range between the second fret and the fifth fret of, um, of the neck. So, I'll play this again. Four note sequence using three notes, basically. So I play one, two, three, one. Two, three, four, two. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Which takes me to the eleventh. Now I can come down with the same thing. Eleven. So here I'm playing eleven, ten, nine, eleven. And then I go 10, 9, 8, 10, 9, 8, 7, 9, 8, 7, 6, 8. Very cool, no? So that's our three note phrase that has been turned into a four note phrase. But, here's where cool things can really start to happen. I say that a lot, but then cool things happen. So watch this. I'm going to take this phrase now. We've played it ascending and descending. But the alternating phrase is so gorgeous. And I hope that you take this to the bass and practice it because it is a beautiful exercise that, again, will help every aspect of your playing. Check this out. So I've got one, two, three, one. But then instead of playing two, three, four, two, I have to play those, those sequence of notes, that sequence of notes in reverse. Which means 
two, three, four, two becomes four, three, two, four. This is such a beautiful exercise. So here, here it goes. So I start as my first four notes, and then I come to the fourth. So there I'm playing four, three, two, four. And now I go down to three. So that's three, four, five, three. And then I have to go up to six, five, four, six. And then five, six, seven, five, eight, seven, six, eight. Seven, eight, nine, seven, and I'm at the eighth, or the one. So that's the sequence. Now I'll play it with a bit more time. Really nice phrase. So nice. So that's my ascending phrase. For the descending alternating phrase on this pattern, equally beautiful, um, but it's a bit complex in its structure. So I'll give you uh, the degrees of the scale. Hopefully you will follow along um, and hopefully it'll make sense. Let's see if it does. So here's how it's put together. What I usually like to do is start from the third of the scale, or in this case, what would be the tenth of the scale. And in the, ca in the case of G major, that tenth is going to be the note B at the fourth fret of the G string. So that's my tenth. Now here's what happens. I play my sequence of three notes, going back to that first note. So those are my three notes. So now I have to think about coming down one note from my lowest note of that phrase. So even though I'm here at the 10th, what I have to do is jump down to the 7th. Because the lowest note of my three note sequence was 10, 9, 8. That's my lowest note. So I have to go a note below that to start my next sequence. So I have 10, 9, 8, 10, and then straight to 7, 8, 9, 7. Now here I land on that 7, so now I can start a note up from that 7, which is 8. So there I play 8, 7, 6, 8. Now here, my lowest note was that 6. So now I have to start from a note below my sixth at the fifth to play the next sequence. So that's five, six, seven, five. See what's happening there? I hope you do. Right? So here I'm playing tenth from the seventh up. 8th, 5th, 6th, 3rd, 4th, root. And then here I can even play from the second down to the major seventh below the root, which takes me right back to G. So I'll play the entire sequence ascending and descending. Um, listen, I understand how confusing this must be for some of you. Um, and there has been talk of maybe supplying PDFs with tab and notation but I've always shied away from that, and I'll tell you why. 
when I learned to play this instrument, I, I kind of, not kind of, I actually taught myself to play from listening to records and picking up things from the music that I really liked. And what I am hoping for this channel is that you use more of your ear to learn these patterns as opposed to looking at them on a piece of, looking at these notes on a piece of paper. I know there is always going to be some value to reading music and I know that that's a very important thing for a lot of musicians. That was not my background. When I taught myself to play, I wasn't reading anything. I wasn't really doing anything but using my ear. So this is what I want for you as well. I know it might be more confusing for some and it might pose a bit more of a challenge, but I think, you know, using your ear is such an important part of music. So for that reason, it's a bit of tough love, friends and neighbors, but I will not be providing PDFs for any of these exercises, not at this point. If you want to notate these exercises for yourself, that's a great exercise as well. Like that's, you know, being able to transcribe and write out things for your own uh, educational purposes, that's fantastic. But I think using your ear is something that we tend to talk a little bit less about. So this is what I want for all of you. Use your ear on these patterns and see if you can pick up, pick up what I'm putting down. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, here we go. Um, so I'll play the entire sequence again. Listen to the pattern. Listen to the sequence, the way that it's put together. And you can almost hear where each note is going without me, without having to explain or hear an explanation from me. You can just hear how these patterns link and how these notes create these beautiful phrases. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I think I'm gonna leave you with that for now. That's a lot of information there on its own. Um, and now that I think about it, now that I've come to the end of, this, end of this video, I feel like this will be the beginning of a series all about um, note sequences and intervallic phrases to play on major and minor scales. This is gonna be fun. This might be a, a, a good series of videos. And, you know, we'll also be talking about like incorporating some time into these exercises. I will bring back the old metronome who I've decided to call Anna One. Can't remember who it was that suggested that name, but yo, good one. Anna One, I like it. Uh, listen, if you like this video, um, please click like, share this video with everyone, uh, anyone who needs to see these kinds of things to help them on their journey to become the best musicians that they can possibly be. And of course, if you are in a position to do so, please donate to the channel. It really helps me out in a huge way uh, and allows me to keep bringing these, uh, these videos to you. Uh, and every donation means a lot, no matter how small or how large. Um, and uh, I really appreciate it. So with that, my friends and neighbors, I'm going to leave you there. I have so much more in the next video. So please stay tuned. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you for tuning into the Brownstone. Once again, my friends and neighbors, and I will see you in the next video. Peace and love.